today's class is on uh, inertia and uh, energy transfer and storage of energy in systems. Uh, I would request all uh, participants to follow these few uh, points. Please keep your mics muted, except when you have a question to ask. Please ask your questions when the lecturer uh, prompts you to ask a question. Please identify yourself when you want to ask your question. If you have any network issues, you can use the, the chat feature in, in, the, in the meeting. Please do give your feedback before you leave at efeedback uh, at hmtmarine.com. So the learning objectives of this uh, lecture is like this. We look at uh, the concepts of inertia in mechanical system to start with. We will review what is uh, Newton's laws of motion in the context of uh, operation of machinery. You will see that uh, inertia also represents storage of energy in, in a lot of applications. The storage of energy can be used in a beneficial manner in many cases. It also represents a safety hazard. That is what we will be looking at. And we will see that uh, the concept of inertia is not linked only to mechanical systems. Similar principles are there in uh, electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic systems also. And we look at uh, what are the practical applications and safety issues related to this principle. This lecture uh, will be useful to, to uh, even school level up to engineering uh, level, even in science this is applicable. Uh, even for experienced engineers and officers, this will be a refresher. It is uh, going back to basics and understanding some core issues. Now, what is the definition of force? Can any student answer? Mass into gravity. Ma no, that is gravitational. What does force itself mean? Mass into acceleration. Okay. Mass into yeah. Energy required. Energy required to. No, force and energy are not same. Okay. So a, fo a force, a force is that external push or pull. Acting on an object which changes or try to change the state of or rest of uh, motion of an object. Okay, very quick. Very quick to browse, I think. Good. <laughs> okay. So, what is the definition of torque? What is torque? Uh, Turning oh, force into perpendicular distance. Okay. What is energy? Capacity to, do capacity work. to do work. Okay, fine. What is work? Force in a distance. Okay. Mechanical work will be like this. There is work in uh, other systems also. Uh, is energy and work same? Can energy be converted to work and work be converted to energy? Yes, sir. Not yes. fully. Not fully. Why not fully? Due to some inherent losses. Yes, but is is the loss really a loss or is it conversion? Okay, it's converted into something else. What is the conservation of energy loss say? 
energetic in another way it can be converted can be converted from one form of energy to another form yes that is what you will see it is you there is a very close relation between what you understand as work and what you understand as energy and the conversion of energy to work and work to back to energy there are issues of efficiency but there is even though we call it loss there is no real loss it is it, there are all issues of efficiency so we will see that part someone said force is mass into acceleration is that the only value of force if you are thinking of mechanical force that uh, force in what we say dynamics the force comes in static uh, uh, issues also if an object, if you if you apply a force to a to a, a rod during a tensile test there is no movement but that is called static uh, application but here we are thinking of uh, dynamic application dynamic means you apply a force and movement takes place so if if force is applied and movement takes place is the formula only this friction comes into picture something else also will come does it mean that if an object moves at uh, uniform speed force is not required records it is required so so this statement which is very common that it is very common for uh, students and even experienced uh, professionals to say often that force is mass into acceleration it is not complete it refers to only part of the force which is which is called as inertial force so we'll be looking at that first what is the meaning of inertial force and from there we move on to other points the first is newton's uh, first law of motion which is very well known uh, learned from school days it says like this an object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted on by an external force this nature is called inertia now what is the measure of inertia how do you measure inertia for translation the meaning of translation when the position of an object changes it is measured by mass this translation can be in a straight line or in a curve like rotation but the principle of translation means a uh, principle of translation is the object changes its position in such a case inertia is measured by mass you will see the example as it comes there is another way of telling this that an object will maintain its momentum what is momentum it is mass into velocity unless it is acted on by another force this is one more way to say newton's first law this is also known as conservation of momentum everyone knows velocity is a vector what is the meaning of vector magnitude and direction it has a magnitude and also has a direction so change of magnitude is also change of velocity and change of direction also is a change of velocity so if you want to make an object to revolve revolution means going around another uh, point like uh, we say earth revolves around the sun or the moon revolves around the earth so to make an object revolve even at uniform speed force is required this is what the meaning of the first law is so it brings you to this very important principle for rotational motion when something is moving in a circular fashion we come across this Uh, what centripetal force is there centrifugal force centripetal and centrifugal centripetal means towards the center towards inwards yes centrifugal means away from the center this everyone knows now the question is where does it come which one which force acts 
if you think an example like this, if you tie a ball or a mast to a string and spin it around and you make it uh, uh, revolve in a circle, then what is the force which is making the ball to move in a circle? Centripetal. Is it centripetal force or is it centripetal? Centripetal. It's a centrifugal force. Centrifugal force. Centrifugal. Centripetal. Both force acting at the same time. No, if if an object was moving in a straight line, and when you are saying I'm going to make it rotate or revolve around something else. I am going to push it in. Instead of going straight like this, instead of going straight like this, the object is turning this way. Is it turning towards the center or is it turning away from the center? Towards the center. The, the object would have moved straight like this. But because I have tied it... Away from the center. Because I have tied it to a string, it is moving this way. So, is this movement toward the center or is it away from the center? Away from the center. Towards the center. Away from 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 the center. Towards the center. So, it's a good way to remember is like this. Imagine there is a fixed point, right? There is a fixed point. Is the center. Comparatively towards the center. Yeah. Now, or, or see this way. Let us say this is a fixed point. Now, if it moves in a straight line, will the distance remain same or will it keep increasing? It's increasing. Increase. Increase. Keep increasing. It'll increase. Now, if it is turning in a circle, what is happening to the distance? Decreases. Distance is remaining same. It is remaining same, or you can say it is not increasing. Will you agree? If I say the distance is not increasing, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. If, the, if the distance yes, is not increasing, the object is being pushed towards the center. So, so to make this object to move in a circular fashion, you have to apply a centripetal force. You have to apply a force towards the center. Then only it will move in this fashion. So where is this required force coming from? Where is the centripetal force coming from? Tension in the center. Tension. Into velocity. MVR. No, we are not looking at the value. The force has to come from somewhere. You are, you are holding on to the string and... You're rotating it around around your head or something. So where is the force coming from? The force comes from the tension in the ring. Take another example. Uh, earth goes around the uh, sun, right? We say moon revolves around the earth. What is making the moon to go around the earth? Earth's gravitational force. Gravitational. gravitational force. Gravitational force. Gravitational attraction. So, gravitational attraction is pulling the moon towards Earth. Then why is the moon, moon uh, not coming towards us and coming and hitting us? Equilibrium. Why is the moon not uh, falling into the Earth? Equilibrium of gravitational force and uh, centrifugal force. Earth centrifugal force because earth of the How can earth centrifugal force push the moon away? The moon's uh, magnetism. Moon's magnetism? No. Moon's centrifugal force is equilibrium to the earth gravitational force. Correct. The, the moon, as it goes around the earth, will also experience a force away from the center. That force is called centrifugal force. So, the centrifugal force experienced 
by the moon because of its movement balances the gravity force here same way in the previous example but why is this uh, string not flying out because you are holding it but why is the ball not coming towards you even though there is tension in the string is because the centrifugal force is balanced by the centripetal force so this principle comes from third law of newton what is the third law every action has an equal and opposite reaction reaction okay what is the meaning of action and reaction here does it mean is it Uh, action is a general action is centripetal and uh, reaction is centrifugal right so so this this uh, uh, what what do you mean to say this word for uh, action is related to force or is also related to torque so every time every every time there is a force in nature there is an uh, equal and opposite force every time there is a, a torque in any on a system the equal and opposite uh, torque and the importance of newton's third law is it is applicable for all kind of system whether whether it is in in a stationary system or uh, moving you will see it whether it, whether it, there is an acceleration or uniform speed in all conditions this newton's third law is applicable so if you see this the tension in the string is the centripetal force that is responsible for the circular motion but this ball will not come towards the center because the centrifugal force will balance it now the question is if the moon suddenly stops what will happen what happen to us sir it will fall it it towards will, towards on earth it will come and hit us okay what is the string breaks now fly sir from the the ball flies away. away in which direction will the ball go straight tangential to the circle why it will not for go this way Because all the object tends to move in a straight line until it is disturbed by the force. So the, the moment the t- tension breaks or, or the string breaks, centripetal force is zero, and centrifugal also zero. Center gravity. To, due to momentum. When the string breaks, this force is zero. This force also becomes zero. object has got velocity in this direction tangential velocity will be there so it will maintain that tangential velocity and it will move in this direction that is what you see in many of you would have observed this uh, in sports when you when you take part in all this kind of throwing uh, whether it is discus or hammer so when the when the athlete spins around and throws the hammer the hammer does not go away from the center of rotation it goes in a tangential direction that is the main principle so newton's third law is very important there is a, there is this equal and opposite force all the time now you imagine a centrifugal pump or a cent- centrifugal separator here which is action and which is reaction how does the centrifugal separator work the centrifugal force is action actually due to the centrifugal force heavier uh, particles will move towards the periphery 
no what i am telling is uh, un- centrifugal is action and centripetal is uh, reaction on this okay so this, there is a, there is liquid filled in the um, separator correct or liquid filled in the uh, in the pump and when the pump impeller rotates the liquid is made to move in a uh, circular fashion will you agree yes in, in a centrifugal pumps impeller when the impeller rotates the liquid comes in contact with the impeller and it will be also made to rotate in a circular fashion that is the shape of the impeller it is made to rotate in a circular fashion so when it is made to rotate in a circular fashion what force will come first centrifugal will come or centripetal will come centrifugal centripetal there is no solid object connecting the liquid to the uh, to the center so what happens is that centrifugal force comes first and the liquid will start moving away if the volute casing was not there what will happen to the liquid the kinetic energy that was built due to the movement of the impeller would have not been uh, imparted into the potential energy which is desirable at the output of the centrifugal pump no the potential energy principle works on difference in height so we are not looking at difference in height now we are looking at what is happening inside an impeller of a centrifugal pump turning it will continue in a tangential direction the liquid which has been thrown away from the impeller which will move to continue in the tangential direction from the point it will thrown it, it is just like uh, there is no string to hold it back so if the casing was not there the liquid will be thrown away but what is the casing doing it is preventing the liquid from moving away so the liquid is not allowed to move but there is acceleration what is the what is the formula for uh, acceleration in rotation centrifugal force formula is how much m r omega square m into r into omega square so centrifugal force is there this force is going to act on the pump casing yes yes will yes. it create pressure yes yes so in which direction will the pressure act opposite pressure acts in all directions but within the liquid it will act inwards so what happens in a centrifugal pump and a centrifugal separator in both cases centrifugal force is created due to the rotation so like one of you said that is the action you are you are making the liquid to rotate and as the liquid rotates since it is not tied to the center it will start moving away but the casing prevents it from moving away and as the casing prevents it from moving pressure will build up and it is the pressure which is responsible for the force towards the center the centripetal and centrifugal force will they be equal all the time in any kind of all these example that you have said during uniform rotation or revolution centripetal and centrifugal force will it be equal no no you looked at this uh, earth going around as an example you looked at this uh, ball around interesting example are they equal or not equal equal sir not equal sir they are they are equal centrifugal force and centripetal force will be equal and opposite in direction yes sir 
So one of the easy ways to imagine how pressure builds up in a centrifugal pump. It is it is it is not a very complicated principle. You can you can simplify it and look at it in certain ways. It is called centrifugal pump. It's not called centripetal pump. Remember, it's called centrifugal pump because what is done is to throw the liquid out. But since the liquid is not allowed to go out by the casing, or the casing restricts it, pressure will build up. So is this pressure related to the centrifugal force? Yes, sir. Yes. What is the formula? M into R omega square. M R omega square. Or M E squared by R. So you can say for a particular uh, RPM of a pump, the centrifugal force is a limited value. Yes? Because it's a limited value, the pressure which is built up is also a limited value. So any, any centrifugal pump, one of the things we always see is that even if I close the discharge valve, the pressure does not keep on increasing. There are many ways of telling. One of the simple ways students will tell is the liquid is only turned around. But there are another, there are many other ways of telling. One of the simple ways to tell is the pressure that you see inside a pump casing is a reaction, is a centripetal force. And the centripetal force is equal to the centrifugal force, which will come. We are looking at uh, no flow condition, which is a maximum you know, pressure that is possible. So since the centrifugal force is limited, centripetal also will be limited. And there is no way the pressure can keep on rising in a centrifugal form. Is this part clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you agree with this or do you have? Sir, uh, sir, there is a mass. Mass, if the mass is different comparatively, then it may change also, sir. Mass. Definitely. The same same pump, if it handles the liquid of uh, different density, pressure will be more. But for that also, the pressure is limited. It, it will not keep on rising. Once, even with the closed discharge well, the pressure cannot keep on increasing. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. But if you if the density is more, definitely pressure will be more. What is uh, okay, sir, okay. common for all of them is if the discharge valve is open and the liquid is allowed to rise, then it will reach a maximum height. That maximum height will be a fixed value. That does not depend on uh, density. But the force or the pressure depends on density. Right? Okay. Any questions in what we have covered so far? Uh, sir, we can say in centrifugal pump, both the forces are acting together. In, in case of, in, in, in the form of Action also in the form of reaction. Everywhere, everywhere. Not only in centrif. That is that is the point. You must always remember Newton's third law comes without any terms and conditions. It is applicable to stationary objects. It is applicable to moving objects. It doesn't matter whether you are moving in a, a straight line or in in a circular fashion. It comes all the time. In the uh, slides which are coming up, we'll be looking at that. Oh, okay, sir. It is always applicable, Newton's law, third law. Any more? Okay. So what is Newton's second law? Second law is it looks at the value that if you if you say equal and opposite force will be there, what will be the value? It is it says that uh, Mass in, uh, or force is equal to rate of change in momentum. 
mass into dv by uh, dt. This is what we write. What is dv by dt? We write it as acceleration. Acceleration. To acceleration. Now, this part refers only to the inertial force because the first law talks about inertia. The force which is mentioned in the second law is only the inertial force. It is not the total force. Which you talk about in any any movement, but this is the one which is remembered by students most often, and so there is an assumption that force is always only mass into acceleration, but that is incorrect. Inertial force is mass into acceleration. So when an object is moving at steady speed, acceleration will be zero. So, does it mean this that when a ship is at full away speed, no force will be required? Only inertial force will be zero, sir. Friction will come into picture. Yes. So, so, so the the principle is that even when a ship is at full away speed, your acceleration is zero. The inertial force will be zero. There is no force required to accelerate the vessel, but force is required still. So why do we require this force? Why is the engine still running? To overcome, to the, overcome the resistance and all. Exactly. There is there, that means the, there is an opposing force still. If this was not there, what will happen is that. Once bridge says uh, RFA and you reach full speed, we can also switch off the engine and say finish with the engines. Why are we not able to do this? Because resistance is there. If resistance was not there to move at uniform speed, no force will be required. So remember this. Third law is is very important. It is applicable irrespective of whether an object is stationary, moving at steady speed in a straight line. If it is moving at changing speed in a straight line, if it is moving at changing speed, then we say there is acceleration. Or it is moving with change in direction, which is like a circular or any arc. Uh, type of direction. Even in that, third law will be applicable. So it doesn't matter whether it is a stationary object or straight line or in any other uh, condition. Third law is always applicable. Applied force will be equal to opposite force. So this. Mass into acceleration is only one part of the opposite, which is the inertia part. This is called inertial force. Now, if you take an example of uh, an air compressor or any compressor, so an air compressor piston. Is uh, moving upwards because the uh, crank is rotating. Like crank is rotating in this fashion, piston will be moving up. Will you have to apply a force to move the piston up? Yes. Yes. So that force come like the compressor is going to be driven by a uh, motor. The motor will develop a torque. What is the formula for torque? Is force into radius. Radius. So based on the radius of the crank, the force will come like this. This force, due to the kinetic rod angularity, will become a force like this. So the the motor is actually applying a force this way. What will be the Value of this force. J 
based on this uh, with this force the piston moves by a small distance called uh, dx so we say applied force is f the newton third law say there must be an equal and opposite force where does the opposite force come from the inertial force will be the opposite force are can you repeat inertia gas flow yeah you will see is, is the piston moving at uh, steady speed or uh, changing speed it will be moving at changing speed due to the angularity piston speed cannot be constant all of you know that in a reciprocating piston the speed of the piston keeps on changing so there is when the when the speed is changing there is acceleration so there is an inertial part which is mass into acceleration there is friction between uh, the piston ring and the liner and there is also this force because of pressure on pressure of the air air pressure acting on uh, so much of area so the opposite force is mass into acceleration also friction and p into a with all this force there is a small movement equal to dx then what is f into dx force into distance work done so the torque work done okay so the motor will be doing a small amount of work in in moving this uh, piston where does this work go it will be stored in the air all of it is stored in air not all of it uh, some of them will be uh, like uh, what you said about against friction and uh, acceleration some of it will be stored in the air so it becomes like this remaining will go as heat see conservation of energy law which all of we already discussed says that you cannot create or destroy it gets converted from one form to another form energy is ability to do work this also we saw so work is transfer of energy this is the relation which is linked to all this so based on this the work which is done to overcome inertia force that is the work done to move the piston to accelerate the piston will be stored in the mass as kinetic energy so if you move a mass moving mass as kinetic energy and it is stored in the object work done to overcome uh, friction becomes heat and it will be dissipated the work done to overcome pressure into area pressure into area is also a downward force that is stored in the air as pressure energy and also as heat when you compress the air its temperature also rises which means uh, heat is also added so uh, all of you will be familiar with the pv diagram of an air compressor so if you write p into dv what you are actually writing is like this it is pressure into area what is pressure into area force is the force exerted by the air you multiply it by the small distance this is rewritten as pressure into dv which is a a into dx like this so pressure into dv is the small amount of work that is done p into dv so if you integrate it over the full stroke integral p dv is the area under the pv diagram and you always learnt like this that area enclosed in a pv diagram is what is it called work done work done 
But remember, this is not the this is not the only uh, energy because heat is also given to the air. Where does this heat go finally? When you when you compress air and pump it into the air bottle, where does the intercoolers are the coolers? It is removed from the coolers. It is so he, that 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 heat loss is something you don't want to do, but it is unavoidable. Right. So the so the connection. So once again, the point which is being told is. Force is not only mass into acceleration. You must always start with the principle that any applied force is equal and opposite force, and inertia is only one part of it. Now let us move on to inertia and rotational motion. In uh, rotational motion, when it is about own axis, inertia is measured by second moment of mass. Or we say. Uh, I. So, if you apply third law for rotation, you will say applied torque equals opposing torque. So, what is the inertia part here? You will say it is I into alpha. What is alpha? Angular acceleration. Angular acceleration. D omega by d two. So, here again, it is the same thing. Work done to overcome inertial torque. Will be stored in the object as kinetic energy. This part is well known to everyone. This is how we say a flywheel will store energy. So, what is the special nature of a flywheel? Is it a heavy object? Sir, I have told you. I have told you. Is it stored in kinetic energy, sir? No. Will you say a flywheel is an object with large mass, or will you say a flywheel is an object with large value of I? I large body. Large body of inertia. Inertia. How many? So see, inertia mass is also inertia. M k square. I is equal to M k square. It depends on how much speed speed fluctuation you want to handle. Yeah. So the the principle of flywheel is where is the major portion of the mass of a flywheel located? Mm -hmm. Is it in the rim, rim. is it rim. away from the center? Away from the center towards it. Away from the center because it is away from the center. It has got a large value of I. And as the large value of I is there, it is capable of storing a large amount of energy. Actual formula comes later. You will see it, but it is capable of storing a large amount of energy. So when you store anything, what is the benefit? You can always get back. Yeah, you can get it back. It also means that any storage is used to handle fluctuations or disturbances. You can see all these examples: money in your bank account, the fat which is stored in your body. Why do you have a scan manifold in an engine? No, air is air is delivered to the scan manifold at a steady rate, but Air flow from the scan manifold to the cylinder is not steady. It moves in in a in in a little bit. It is like an accumulator. Yeah, in in unsteady fashion. It moves in an unsteady fashion. So due to this, you need a storage to handle the disturbances. So you see, why is a flywheel not used in an induction motor for a centrifugal pump? Because you use it. Only where applied torque is not steady, or opposing torque is not steady. So you will see only examples where an reciprocating engine could be there, or a reciprocating compressor is there. And if you if you have a larger uh, flywheel, then the changes will also be less. So this is the reason you are deliberately adding inertia to a to a mass. To a system, you see how energy is transferred in an alternator. When you see this again, talks about how uh, additional torques come. If an if an alternator is idling, then the engine has to apply a torque, and the torque of the engine. What is the purpose? It will overcome. This is the applied torque. What you see in this color, 
supply torque. This is opposing torque. The north and south represent uh, field in the rotor, north pole and south pole in the rotor. Alternator is idling. That means it is not connected to a, to a load. So there will be no current in the stator. Do you agree? Yes. How many magnets are rotating? How many magnetic field is there? There is a single magnetic field or, or a single magnet rotating in the rotor. So the, the if, if an engine is applying this much torque, what will the opposing torque consist of? One is inertia. Second is friction. So if you are uh, if you are uh, rotating at steady speed, then inertia part will be zero. Then you apply only uh, fri uh, frictional torque. You need to apply only the frictional torque. But once the alternator is on load, that is the picture you see here. There will be a current flowing in the stator. And when current flows in the stator, it will produce its own magnet. And that magnet is shown here. So what is the effect of this magnet and this magnet? If these two, this is the stator's magnet, this is the rotor magnet. What will be the effect? It enhances the opposing torque. It will, it will, it will apply a torque in the opposite direction, and the opposite torque is becoming more and more. As the current flows more and more, this opposite torque also becomes more and more. So why this opposite torque is there? That is how energy is transferred. Energy is transferred from the rotor to the stator. Mechanical energy is given to the rotor. And what comes out from the stator is electrical energy. And the common bit, common function between the two is the magnetic field. So here again, you can see the when the engine is rotating and driving the alternator, the torque applied by the engine is balanced by two or three opposite torques. One is inertia, second is friction. Third is the magnet. Now, how sh big should be the flywheel in an alternator engine? This is a simple principle. If you have a larger flywheel, then you will have less dip in RPM when load is added. Flywheels are capable of being used even for UPS. UPS meaning uninterrupted power supply. So normally we think of batteries as UPS, but you can also have flywheels as uh, storage devices, which will give electrical power for short periods, but for uh, long periods. As an interim measure, you can keep. There are many, many manufacturers who produce this. Main engine flywheel is actually small. When you compare with the rest of the mass of a main engine, flywheel is small because you don't really need it. But the air composite flywheel is actually quite large. So, I need to move on. Okay. Mr. Vegetation, sir. No, I'll, I'll let me cover this remaining part then I'll take the question. Okay. So, this part how is in an electrical system? When, uh, when a DC current flows it will produce a magnetic field and this magnetic field is static and it does not cut the conductor. Do you agree? Yes, sir. If DC current goes through a straight wire, DC current is steady current, so the magnetic field also will be steady. And it will not cut the conductor at all because the magnetic field is given by the uh, right hand uh, no, thumb through rule. So when current flows like in the direction of your thumb, the magnetic field will be the direction of your fingers. So through a straight wire, there is no uh, magnetic field cutting the conductor. If a DC current flows through a coil, then a magnetic field will cut the conductor but it will not 
the change because the magnetic field is again static. If the AC current flows through a straight wire, will the magnetic field be steady or it will change? Change. It will change, but it's cut the conduct because it is a straight wire. So in all these examples, in all these examples, the only what is the opposition to current flow in all these three examples? You apply a voltage and you get a current. In all these three examples, the only opposition will be resistance. But if you take the next case where an AC current passes through a coil, then what happens? You have a changing magnetic field which will cut the wire and that produces EMF. Because what is the principle of EMF generation? When a magnetic field associated with the conductor changes, EMF is induced. And what is Lenz's law saying? Lenz's law says that induced EMF generates a current in a direction which will oppose the change. So what does op opposing change mean? The word inertia, what does it mean? What is inert gas? Inert gas means it does not want to react. So the, the word, whenever you say opposing the change, that itself introduces the concept of inertia. So what it means is the same thing. What in an AC current passing through a coil, we normally say there is an inductive reactance. Do you agree? Yes. The inductive reactance. The inductive reactance is written like this. E is the EMF. L is the inductive reactance of the, of the coil. And it depends on DI by DT. DI by DT means rate of change in current. How is it with uh, mechanical system? Force is mass into rate of change in velocity. So you can see the relation. EMF is electromotive force. Electromotive force through an inductive coil looks very similar to moving an object. So if, if mass is inertia here, then what is inertia here? Inductance. So can this mass store energy? Yes. Yes. So can this coil store energy? Yes, sir. It will also store energy in the same fashion. And you will see a lot of similarities. If you look at this formula, then you will go back to that one. So this energy storage formula is there. And you will see something very neat across all these examples. This is kinetic energy for translation. What is the meaning of translation? Linear motion. Moving in a straight no, not only a uh, straight line. Position is changing. Position changes. It can be rotation or linear motion. Kinetic energy for translation is half into m into v square. Kinetic energy for rotation is half into i into omega square. So if, so if, you, are, if you are asked, okay, flywheel stores energy, how much energy will it store? What is the formula for that? Half i into difference half between omega, omega 2 square. minus omega 1 whole square. No, no. The, the I is a total value for the flywheel. It is rotating currently at one particular uh, RPM. RPM to omega is 2 pi n by 60. So all you need to look at is what is the I value of the flywheel? What is its uh, angular velocity? This is the amount of energy it stores. How much it will absorb and release depends on the change. But a flywheel which is rotating at constant RPM or any mass which is rotating will store this much of kinetic energy. What is the formula of energy inductive coil? Half into L into I square. Energy stored in a capacitor, half into C. 
V square. This is capacitance. What is V? The voltage. The voltage to which the capacitor is charged. Energy is stored in a spring. It is half into K, where K is called spring stiffness. 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 Force divided by deflection. And X is the amount of compression or extension that is there. So half into K into X square. This is the energy stored in a spring. What is strain energy? Strain energy is when when uh, 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 you you take a, a steel rod and you put it under tension and it stretches, or you take a, a, a mooring rope and it is under tension, it stretches. So energy which is stored within the mechanical part. So if you bend a rod, it will store energy. So the strain energy formula is also you will see it is half into V is volume here. And E is Young's modulus, and this is the strain. So here, so if you say, look, if you say inertia is here in all of them, what is inertia here? Mass. What is inertia here? Second moment of mass. What is inertia here? Inductive reactance. This is capacitance. This is stiffness. And this is the product of volume and Young's modulus. In all these cases, energy is stored. And what are the implications of energy storage? Stored energy is dangerous. Stored energy is also used. Why do we use a choke in a tube like? Simple. We can use a large amount of uh, voltage difference. Yeah, it actually, it actually stores energy in the In lot of applications, the storing of energy is unavoidable. Electrical energy remains for cutting off the flow. So you go back to the formula, previous case. Can an inductive coil store energy after current stops? No. No. But can a capacitor store energy after current stops? Yes. Capacitor is capable of storing even after current stops because it works on voltage. The inductive coil stores energy only when current is flowing. So an inductive coil is actually more like a flywheel. Can a flywheel store energy when it is not rotating? No. no sir. Flywheel needs to rotate. Then it stores energy. So inductive coil and flywheel are actually similar in nature. The capacitor is more like a mass which is hanging. So a hanging mass can store energy even when it is not moving. So understand this, that stored energy is used in a lot of applications. There is a concept of uh, inertia which is applicable not only to mechanical system, even though it is well known in, in uh, mechanical systems. You must start with the idea that inertia is resistance to change. So the system is not changed easily then we say the system has got more inertia. And inertia is deliberately introduced in systems for stability purpose, but it also has a lot of safety issues. Okay, any questions? I will take now. Do you have any questions now? Yeah, moderator here, sir. The question raised by Mr. Suranjan, he needs the explanation of the masses are majorly distributed in flywheel. Where the masses are majorly, majorly distributed in flywheel? It will be on the periphery, not in the center. The, the outer rim of a flywheel is always heavy because 
second moment of mass depends on square of the distance from center there is no point in concentrating the mass on the center of the of the flywheel so it should be distributed to outside